All right, uh, yeah, another idea coming out of uh, California, a proposal on the part of Gavin Newsom that he hopes to implement very soon where companies are required uh, to release their carbon footprint or what progress they are making to be cleaner and, I guess, meaner. Uh, well, a lot of people are having a pretty mean reaction to that and the costs involved. Alex Epstein is here, the moral case for fossil fuels, the author. Very good read of all of this stuff. Alex, what do you make of this? I mean, California, where I live, is just so disastrous in terms of energy. I mean, we already tried, you know, we're banning internal combustion engine vehicles, and then five days later, Newsom had to announce we don't have enough electricity to charge the meager number of EVs we have now. And now it's this totalitarian tracking system where the government is telling you, like, track every little bit of CO2 emissions related to your business for companies that are a billion dollars or bigger. This is just another reason to not do business in California, which is tragic for those of us who live in California, but also the rest of the country. Like the, we should have a booming state here, uh, and instead we're just ruining it with terrible energy policies. What um, are businesses saying to this? I mean, uh, can he force the issue? Well, I mean, he can force a lot of things. I mean, you see this at the federal level with the SEC, what they call climate disclosures, and businesses are really upset about this, uh, except for, I think, rent seekers who just want to take advantage of being big. And so they can afford all of this paperwork and all this totalitarian compliance, and smaller businesses can't. $1 billion is not that big for business. So it's just, just imagine you have to track this kind of impossible thing. Like, you can't actually know all the CO2 emissions. And most of the people who are happy about this are people people who are committing energy accounting fraud in one way or another. The number one example is Apple, who's boosting this. I mean, I exposed Apple for energy accounting fraud in 2016, and instead of refuting it, Tim Cook had his deputy, Steve Dowling, take down my Forbes piece for five days for just pointing out that you're obviously not 100% renewable, you're obviously not carbon neutral, this is just a scam, and these are the companies that are pushing Newsom to crack down on everyone and make everyone's lives miserable. But, uh, you know, do, do what they say for thee, but not for me. I mean, there are favorites companies and then there are not so favored companies like the big energy concerns and the so-called fossil fuel industry that you, you write so eloquently about their persona non grata here. That's that's for sure. But even you see fossil fuel companies claiming we're net zero complying with these things, often the larger ones like this. But look, nobody is net zero in a meaningful way unless you're doing it in a scalable way. If you buy a bunch of offsets like planting trees or mangroves or something like that, even if that actually absorbs the CO2 you think it does, that's not a scalable thing. So it's just a bunch of wealthy companies buying a very limited pool of offsets and then saying to the rest of the world, hey, why can't you do what we do? But it's just virtue signaling by rich people. And it's sends a terrible message to the public, which is it's possible to be net zero soon, which is absolutely impossible without really destroying the world. Yeah, there isn't a clear science on how you, you know, calculate that. Um, Alex, thank you very much. Alex X being on all of that. Uh